That's right. Thanks for tuning in for a little bit more of the one and only Ivan. I wonder where I wonder if we can hear where her mommy is. Mm, I don't know. Let's listen. This one's called Old News. When Julia comes, she sits by Stella's domain and watches the new baby. She barely talks to me. Stella doesn't talk to me either. She is too busy nuzzling Ruby. She is cute little Ruby with her ears flapping like palm leaves, but I am handsome and strong. Bob trots a circle around my belly before settling down in just the right spot. Give it up, Ivan, he says, your old news. Julia gets out a piece of paper and a pencil and I can see that she is drawing Ruby. I move to the corner of my domain to pout. Bob grumbles. He doesn't like it when I disrupt his naps. Homework, Julia's father scolds. Julia sighs and puts her drawing aside. I grunt and Julia glances in my direction. Poor old Ivan, she says. I've been ignoring you, haven't I? Julia thinks for a moment and then smiles. She walks over to my domain to a spot in the corner where the glass is broken. She slides paper through. She rolls a pencil across my cement floor. You can draw the baby elephant too, Julia says. I bite the pencil in half with my magnificent teeth. And then I eat some paper. Why? Because <laughs> he's a gorilla. This one's called tricks. Even after Julia and her father leave, I try to keep sulking, but it is no use. Gorillas are not, by nature, powders. Stella, I call, it's a full moon. Do you see? Sometimes when we are lucky, we catch a glimpse of the moon through the skylight in the food court. I did, Stella says. She is whispering and I realize that Ruby must be asleep. Is Ruby all right? I ask. She's too thin, Ivan, Stella says. Poor baby, she was in that truck for days. Mac bought her from a circus the same way he bought me, but he, but she hasn't but she hadn't been there long. She was born in the wild, like us. Will she be okay, I ask? Stella doesn't answer my question. The circus trainers chained her to the floor, Ivan. All four feet, 24 hours a day. I'm puzzled over why this would be a good idea. I always try to give humans the benefit of the doubt. Why would they do that, I finally ask. To break her spirit, Stella says. So she could learn to balance on a pedestal, so she could stand on her hind legs, so a dog could jump on her back while she walked in mindless circles. I hear her tired voice and think of all the tricks that Stella has learned. This one's called Introductions. What's that mean? Like when you first meet somebody, you get introduced to them or you're given introductions. When I awake the next morning, I see a little trunk, trunk poink, poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small, clear voice. I'm Ruby. She waves her trunk. Hello, I say. I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey? Ruby asks. Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes are closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I'm a dog of uncertain heritage. Why did the dog climb your tummy? Ruby asks. Because it's there. Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake? I ask. On Stella's asleep, Ruby says her foot is hurting her, I think. Ruby turns her, her head. Her eyes are like Stella's, black and long lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by tall grass. When is breakfast? She asks. Soon, I say. When the mall opens and the workers come. Where? Ruby twists her head in the other direction. Where are the other elephants? It's just you and Stella, I say. And for some reason, I feel that we have let her down. Are there more of you? Not, I say, at the moment. Ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers it. Do you have a mom and a dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunt and my sisters and my cousins. Ruby says, she drops the hay, picks it up and twists it. They're dead. I don't know what to say. 
I'm not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. To be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she says. Well, who else? Bob asks, and we all fall silent. Stella and Ruby, there's a picture of them. Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap their ears, they rumble and roar, they sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other, their trunks twisted together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. This one's called Home of the One and Only Ivan. What did that we just read that one. That one was Stella, Stella and Ruby. Mac and George are out by the highway. I can see them through one of my windows. They are next to each other on a tall, on tall wooden ladders, leaning against the billboards that tell the cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, the mighty silverback. George has a bucket and a long handled broom. Mac has a piece of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George drips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with liquid from the bucket and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many, many pieces before they are done. When they climb down from the ladders, I see that they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. That elephant has a lopsided smile. She is wearing a red hat and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I've only known Ruby one day, and I could have drawn her better. This one's called Art Lessons. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And have you ever seen a green giraffe? And can you get me some of those pink clouds that the humans are eating? That's what she's calling cotton candy. When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent and the waterfall has no water and the trees have no roots. I'm aware of that, I say. It's art, a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make art? Ruby asks. Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it? Ruby asks. I pause. I've never talked to anyone about this before. When I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always. Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her trunk. What do you draw, anyway? Bananas, mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift store for $25 a piece with a frame. What's a frame? Ruby asks. What's a dollar and what's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck? Ruby asks. I don't answer. And Ruby asks me, surprising me. I think of my father snoring peacefully under the sun while I try. I know to wake him. I see really comfortable. What did that hit wind there? Oh, nothing. This one's called Treat. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right shirt pocket for the treat he brings her every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats. Stella's his favorite, but I don't mind. She's my favorite too. Stella sees that George's box is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her trunk and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. She removed it. Walks past. The toilet's plugged up in the men's bathroom, he says. It's a big mess. I'll take care of it. George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Um, before you go, Mac, George says, you might want to take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Infected. It's not doing well. She needs to go to the doctor. Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight, though. 
don't be calling the vet every time she sneezes. Can't be calling the vet every time she sneezes. George strokes Stella's trunk. trunk. She inspects his pockets one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says as he watches Mac walk away. This one's called Elephant Jokes. Ivan, Bob! I blink. The dawn sky is smudged of gray, flecked with pink, like a picture drawn with two crayons. I can just make out Ruby in the shadows, waving hello with her trunk. Are you awake? Ruby asks. Well, we are now, says Bob. Aunt Stella's still asleep, and I don't want to wake her because she said her foot was hurt, and I'm really, really... Ruby pauses for a breath. Really bored. Bob opens one eye. You know what I do when I'm what? Ruby asks eagerly. Bob closes his eyes. I sleep. It's a little early, Ruby, I say. I'm, I'm used to getting up early. Ruby wraps her trunk around with the bars on the door. At my old circus, we always got up when it was still dark, and then we had breakfast, and we walked in a circle, and then they changed up, chained up my feet, and that really hurt. They put a They put a chain on her so that she couldn't go anywhere. Why? Oh, they didn't want her to leave. Why? They wanted her to work at the circus. Ruby falls silent, and instantly, Bob is snoring. Ivan, Ruby asks, do you know any jokes? I especially like jokes about elephants. Um, well, let me see. I heard Matt tell one once. I yawn. Um, how can you tell that an elephant has been in the refrigerator? How? By the footprints in the butter. <laughs> Ruby doesn't react. I sit up on my elbows, trying not to disturb Bob. Get it? Well, what's a refrigerator? Ruby asks. It's a human thing, a cold box with the door, and they put food in it. They can put food in the door or food in the box? And is it a big box, Ruby asks, or a little box? I can see this is going to take a while, so I sit all the way up, and Bob slides off, grumbling. I reach for my pencil, the one I snapped in half with my teeth. Here, I say, I'll draw you a picture of one. In the dim light, it takes me a minute to find a piece of paper Julia gave me. Paper is a little damp and has a smear of something orange on it. I think it's from a tangerine. I try my best to make a refrigerator. The broken pencil is not cooperating, but I do what I can. What is it the real doing right here? So let's show the picture and then I'll explain it. So that's that's Ivan. And he's drawing the picture. He's trying to explain to, her, to Ruby what a refrigerator is because she doesn't know. I try my best to make a refrigerator. The broken pencil is not cooperating, but I do what I can. By the time I'm done, the first streaks of morning sun have appeared in flashy cartoon colors. I hold up my pictures for Ruby to see. She studies it intently, her head turned so that one black eye is trained on my drawing. How you made that? Is this the thing you were telling me about before? Art? Sure is, I can draw all kinds of things. I'm especially good at fruit. Can you draw a banana right now? Ruby asks. Absolutely. I turn the paper over and sketch. Wow. Ruby says again in an odd voice when I hold up the page. It looks good enough to eat. She makes a happy lilting sound, an elephant laugh. It's like the song of a bird I recall from long ago, a tiny yellow bird with a voice like dancing water. Strange. I'd forgotten all about that bird. How she'd wake me every morning at dawn when I was still curled safe in my mother's nest. It's a good feeling making Ruby laugh, so I draw another picture and another. Along the edges of the paper, an orange, a candy bar, a carrot. What are you two up to? Stella asks, moaning as she tries to move her sore foot. How are you this morning? I ask. I'm just feeling my age, she says. Stella says, I'm fine. Ivan is making me pictures, Ruby says. And he told me a joke. I really like Ivan, Aunt Stella. Stella winks at me. Me too, she says. Ivan, you want to hear my favorite joke, Ruby asks. I heard it from Maggie. She was one of the giraffes in my old circus. Sure, I say. It goes like this. Ruby clears her throat. What do elephants have that nothing else has? Trunks, I think, but I don't answer because I don't want to ruin Ruby's fun. I don't know, Ruby, I reply. What do elephants have? that nothing else has. Baby elephants, Ruby says. Good one, Ruby, I say. 
watching Stella stroke Ruby's back with good one, Stella says softly. All right, we'll read one more and then we'll pause for right now. This one's called Children. Once I asked Stella if she'd ever had any babies. She shook her head. I never had the opportunity. You would have made a great mother, I told her. Well, thank you, Ivan, Stella says, clearly. I like to have, I like to think so. Having young ones is a big responsibility. You have to teach them how to take mud baths, of course, and emphasize the importance of fiber in their diet. She looked away, contemplating. Elephants are excellent, contem are excellent at contemplating. I think the hardest part of being a parent, Stella added after a while, would be keeping your baby safe from harm protecting them the way silverbacks do in the jungle i said what is silverback? silverback that's the type of gorilla that's the type of gorilla that ivan is exactly stella nodded you have been good at protecting too i say confidently yeah. i'm not so sure stella said gazing at the iron bars surrounding her i'm not sure at all okay well, we're gonna pause there yeah bye bye Somebody let me let me end it.